So welcome to today's video. We're going to be talking about vitamin D. And vitamin D is not actually a vitamin. So maybe, that, maybe that's a little curveball to, to get you interested because vitamin D is actually not a vitamin. We're going to talk about that uh, down here. So first of all, like, why should you care? If you've clicked this, you're probably already slightly interested, but why should you care? Like, the, the, so these four factors, these are huge. These have a, a huge impact on your day-to-day -day life. So vitamin D affects your immune modulation. So this is, this is basically like how your immune system functions. So if you have autoimmunity or if you have chronic infections, vitamin D is really important. It affects your circadian balance. So if you have low energy, poor sleep, and your mood and emotions are imbalanced, this is really important to get right. This is a fundamental part about this. This goes further than just the circadian balance affecting the mood and emotions. Vitamin D significantly affects it as well. As I said, it's not a vitamin. It's actually a hormone. So hormones really affect how you feel. And this is why it can affect your mood and emotions so much. And up here we've got metabolic functions. So if you have dental cavities or if you have problems with your teeth or if you have bone density issues, so osteoporosis, osteopenia, or you just generally don't have like strong joints, strong bones, this is something you really need to know. So we're gonna, we're gonna del delve into these a little bit more and, and look at how, how vitamin D affects these things. And I'm gonna help you understand not only why these are important, how this actually works. You can see we've got some amazing visuals down here. I drew you a liver, I drew you some kidneys. We've got a little sun over here. So I'm gonna walk you through the process of how we might actually make vitamin D and like how to actually supplement and what to actually do to make sure that you're making sure that you're getting the right amount of vitamin D so you can have all of the benefits for the things that we're gonna talk about up here. So this is gonna be a full guide of everything you need to know about vitamin D. So we're gonna cover, we're gonna cover everything. Vitamin D, it's not actually a vitamin, it's a hormone. This is a really important distinction because when you understand that it's not a vitamin, you you begin to see that as it's a hormone it has there's there's more nuance to it so with it with the vitamins it's quite simple it's like either you have enough or you don't have enough and if you have enough you'll feel good and if you don't have enough you're not going to feel good but the thing about hormones is the levels of the active compound fluctuate every second of every day so lots of different stimulus or different things in your environment are going to change the levels of these hormones in your body and they're going to change how you feel. So vitamin D, we need to completely rework how you think about vitamin D because it's not actually a vitamin. The way that it functions inside the body is like a hormone. It's more like a hormone than a vitamin. In truth, the true vitamin here, the true vitamin is, is the sunlight because a vitamin is defined as something that we can't synthesize inside our own body and we can't make sunlight inside our own body. But we can make vitamin D and we actually do it here and we're gonna walk you through this process of how we make vitamin D. But the true vitamin is actually the sunshine. We have all of the prerequisites, we have the machinery to actually make vitamin D inside ourselves. The only component that we miss is the sunlight. So the sunlight is actually the vitamin. The vitamin D that we think of is actually a hormone and that is really important to understand in how we can make sure we get all of the benefits from vitamin D supplementation, sun exposure and, and understanding what, what vitamin D does inside the body. So let's go a little bit more in depth into the functions. So we've got immune modulation up here and this is the key word here, I've underlined it, modulation. So the word modulate means to, to control, to, to vary. So if your immune system is like overactive and you have autoimmunity, if you have low vitamin D, th that might be contributing to it. But you might find that your autoimmune symptoms, so your immune system is up here, is regulated, it's brought down by the appropriate vitamin D levels. It's a modulator. And on the other side, if you have chronic infections, so say you've got like SIBO or a gut infection or parasites or something, Lyme disease, EBV, any of these chronic infections, these mean that your immune system is too low. And vitamin D is something that modulates it. So this can bring your immune system up if it's too low. So getting your vitamin D right is really important whether you're on either side of the spectrum. So whether you have chronic infections and you have low immunity or whether you have autoimmune disease and your immune system is really high. Either way, this is gonna bring it back to balance. It's gonna bring it back to normal. So making sure you get your levels right is really important for modulating the immune system up or down and so you, maybe you've got both, you know, maybe you've got chronic infections and maybe you have autoimmunity. This is going to help your immune system fight the infections, but it's also going to bring your autoimmunity down. So it's really important that we get it right for this reason. It brings it up and it brings it down depending on the need. Down here we have circadian balance. And again, I'm, I'm using very specific words here. So the word here is balance. So the, the, these words are key because it's all about finding that that sweet spot in the middle. You know, balance is that 
Health is balance. So being able to find balance in the circadian rhythm is really important. So what does this look like? This looks like having loads of energy in the day, you know? I want you to wake up in the morning and be like, let's get it, you know, let's go, let's live my life, let's pursue my purpose, let's chase my dreams, let's have the energy to go out and socialize and engage with other people and bring the earth towards the new version of earth that I want it to be and to live a life that I love and enjoy. But if you get up and you're like, I'm really, I'm really tired, you know? You're not, you're not going to do anything. You're not going to enjoy yourself. But this has the flip side of the sleep. You know, you, I want you to be able to go into, like, lay down in bed and just like, like a light switch, you know, like Charlie Puth, you know, like a light switch, just off. You know, you lay in bed, you're, you're asleep. And this is the balance, you know. I want you to wake up and have loads of energy, abundant energy, and just go and live your life and enjoy yourself. But then it comes to nighttime and like that, like a light switch, you're out, you're asleep, done. And that's the balance, you know, super high energy in the day, super low energy at night, you just fall asleep. And that's what we really want. And the, the reason that vitamin D is so important is, as I said, the, the, the true like vitamin here is the, the sunshine, the sunshine component. And your circadian rhythm, so for, for those of you who might not know, circadian rhythm is the master rhythm of the body. So think about like, you probably get hungry at the same time every day. You probably, if you work out, you crave that workout at the same time every day. If you're really good at waking up and falling asleep at the same time every day, you'll just do it without alarms, you know? This is your body's rhythm. This is its, its circadian rhythm. And this is primarily regulated by light, by light exposure. So this is one reason vitamin D is really important in this because we synthesize vitamin D from the light. So your vitamin D levels are, are gonna be quite literally directly correlated with your circadian rhythm. Because whenever you're having the sunlight stimulus is whenever your body would be synthesizing vitamin D or creating and producing vitamin D. So these two are directly linked. And if your circadian rhythm is off, you can try to bring that back into balance by using vitamin D supplementation or making sure that you're getting appropriate sunlight exposure because it brings it back in to balance where it should be. And this looks like you wake up and you're full of energy and then you go to sleep and you just, you're out like a light. You're just done, asleep. And it's easy and you don't wake up and it's restful. And then you wake up the next morning, you're like, I'm buzzing, I'm ready to go. Let's get on with life. Both of these massively affect your mood and emotions in themselves. So I've got a little arrow, an extra arrow pointing here because your circadian balance really affects your mood and emotions. But more than that, your vitamin D levels are gonna directly affect your mood and emotions as well. As I said, vitamin D is a hormone. Hormones, whenever you hear the word hormone, I want you to think hormones dictate how I feel. So cortisol and stress hormones are gonna make you feel like, like agitated and, and wired, but they give you the energy to get through the stresses of the day. And then you've got other, other types of hormones. So they, 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 they modulate how you feel. So with that being said, looking at vitamin D through the lens of it actually being a hormone, this is gonna have a direct impact on how you feel through the day, at night, when you're trying to go to sleep, when you're interacting with other people, when you're, when you're doing your job, when you're doing things, you know? This is gonna affect your mood and emotions. So it's really important we get it in balance for that reason because who doesn't wanna feel better, you know? If you feel depressed or anxious or you get you get, so there's a condition called SAD, which is like a, a seasonal depression. So like during the winter months, you get depressed. This is probably a vitamin D deficiency. And even if you feel great, of course you wanna feel better, you know? If you, if, and, and it's usually easy, you know, if you're already feeling good, to get a little bit better is usually so much easier than it is to go from feeling bad to feeling good. But even then, it, this is really important that we understand and, and implement. And finally, we've got metabolic function. So there's, there's a lot, you know, there's so, like hormones impact every single thing inside your body. Literally almost all of your cells have vitamin D receptors. So vitamin D is gonna affect the metabolic function of, of almost everything that's happening inside your body. So from digestion to immune function, circadian rhythm, mood and emotions, everything. Detoxification, vitamin D is gonna affect it. But the two key metabolic functions that I wanted to look at here were bone density and dental cavities. So the reason vitamin D is really important is it pairs with another fat soluble vitamin called vitamin K2. And we're gonna talk about that down here when we talk about supplementation. Combining these two nutrients together, these are both fat soluble nutrients, vitamin D, vitamin K2, they instruct the body what to do with calcium. So they say, this, so you, you can take a calcium supplement, but if you don't have the right levels of vitamin D and K2, they'll just float around inside your blood and then they'll get removed by your kidneys. And if your kidneys are working well, then great, that won't be a problem. But if your kidneys are struggling a little bit, or if you're taking lots of calcium and you don't have these levels, this can form kidney stones and that really sucks. This was a big mistake that I made. So I took vitamin D without vitamin K2 and that, that causes an imbalance. 
and that gave me kidney stones and that was, that was awful. So don't do the same mistake that I did, but I'm gonna talk you through how we can do this down here so that you don't have the same problem that I did because that was, that was awful. I don't, <laughs> don't, I don't want anybody to have to go through that. So, and, and for that reason, this is one reason, if you can do it naturally, if you can do it from sun exposure, it's just so much better. But I know that's not always possible and even like in winter, you, you need a little bit of help because there just isn't that much sun and you still wanna be able to feel good. So, it's really important because the vitamin D and the vitamin K2, they work together. Again, hormones, they're signaling molecules. They tell the calcium where it needs to go. So they say, calcium, get in the bone. Calcium, get into the tooth, go into the enamel. Build up the body in these areas where we need, that. so this calcium is like a, it's like a, it's like a rock, you know? And you want your bones and your teeth to be like semi-flexible rocks, you know? You want them to be solid. They will give you structure. Your teeth, they need to be strong. So the vitamin D combined with the K2 is what signals the calcium to move into these structures inside your body. So it's really important for that as well. So if you have cavities, especially if you have like good dental hygiene, you take good care of yourself and you still develop cal cavities, this is a huge part, you know? This is, this is probably even more important than the dental hygiene component. I, I actually genuinely think that this, this side of things, the vitamin D, the K2 and the nutrition is more important than the, the brushing your teeth. Do you really think that your caveman ancestors brush their teeth twice a day. I don't think they did, you know? <laughs> I think they had more big, bigger problems to be worrying about. But also bone density as well. So if you've got osteoporosis, osteopenia, if you fracture easy, or if you've broke broken bones easily, this is something that's really important. So the process. Oh, let me just get comfortable. So the process. How do we actually make vitamin D? So this is, this is the process from like food and, and all of the intakes that we have to an actual bioavailable form of vitamin D that we can use. So we start by eating saturated fat. This, is satura this isn't any fat, this is saturated fat. It has to be saturated fat. So all the times that you've been, hurt, been told that saturated fat is bad, that's completely wrong. That's, I have another video that you might find interesting if you, if you want some help going through that. Just type like my name, William Dickinson, cholesterol on YouTube, you will, you'll find it. Saturated fat, super important. It's the precursor to cholesterol. Cholesterol, also very demonized, very important. Cholesterol is the precursor to vitamin D. So every single molecule of vitamin D that you make inside your body is made out of cholesterol. It's super important. So we eat the saturated fat. This is digested, absorbed. The liver takes this saturated fat. So this, this little, these little black arrows represent entering the bloodstream. So we eat the saturated fat, this comes into our body, goes into the bloodstream, the liver reabsorbs it, it turns that fat into cholesterol. This fat is then either moved straight into the, into the liver or it's packaged up and redistributed around the body. And then it comes to the skin. So this cholesterol gets packaged up into LDLC, so LDL cholesterol, the, the, the evil one, you know, if you, <laughs> you've probably been told that's the evil one, not at all. It's bringing this healthy, vital cholesterol to your skin where you have this reaction that occurs. So the cholesterol comes into the skin, the sun shines the, the, the certain frequencies of light that your body needs. There's so many benefits to the different frequencies of light. So you've got like infrared, ultraviolet, and a million different things in between. The sun is literally just like condensed energy that's being, that, you, that you just absorb. So like plants live on just sunlight alone, basically. The sun is so important. It's so much more than just vitamin D. But for the sake of making the video kind of simple, we're just gonna be looking at the vitamin D function today. So you absorb these, these, these rays of light that your body uses to take this cholesterol molecule and to turn it into vitamin D. So if you take vitamin D as a supplement, it comes in at this stage. So this is why if you don't have good sun exposure, and I'm gonna say if you can get it, then just, just do it, okay? Supplements, you're not gonna find health in a supplement. I'll, I'll just throw that out there for you now. If you're planning on healing just by taking a bunch of supplements, it's not gonna work. It, doesn't, it just doesn't work like that. Health is so much more than just pop 50 pills a day. That doesn't work. Even if they're not like medication, if they're actually supplements, that's not the way that you're gonna get healthy. So if you can do it with sun, then do it. If you can't, and like even, so I live in Portugal, it's very sunny most of the time. Even now, I cannot synthesize enough vitamin D, so he's a supplement. But we'll, we'll get to that, we'll talk about that down here. So the cholesterol goes to the skin, it adds to, the sun is absorbed through the this exposure. The cholesterol is then turned into vitamin D. So this is the first inactive form of vitamin D. This then goes through a process. So this is, this is gonna help you understand what, more about why this is a hormone. So this form now goes to the liver. The liver processes it in some way. 
it's then passed to the kidneys. The kidneys then process it in some way, and then it's actually activated vitamin D. So the reason I think that it's important to include these steps is whenever we're talking about hormones of any kind, so obviously we're looking at vitamin D here, but this, this is for all steroid and stress hormones, so your testosterone, your estrogen, your cortisol, all of your different hormones, they all, they're all impacted by the liver and the kidneys. So anytime they're activated, it, it more often than not is happening inside the kidneys. So you see this final stage of activation happens inside the kidneys. Whenever we're thinking hormones and, and especially activation, we wanna think kidneys. So your adrenal glands, adrenal, the word adrenal, so the word adrenal gland is literally a contraction of ad, which means above, and renal, which means kidney. So I've got your kidneys here. Your adrenals are basically like two little, they're like little hats that sit on top like this of each kidney. So your kidneys and your adrenals play a, an essential role in basically activating almost all of the hormones that, that are inside your body. And most of them, some of them go through the kidneys, but most of them are then processed out through the liver. These are two huge key points that I just forgot about when you, you think about hormones. You're looking at like the hormone levels, the testosterone, and it's like they're activated and broken down by the kidneys and the liver. It's so important. And that's why I've included it here because you think it's just this, this part, like this is so important. So you need good liver health. You need good kidney health. This is really important. And then this is activated and now you have active vitamin D. This is the form of vitamin D that does these things, that modulates your immune system, that balances your circadian rhythm, that improves your mood and emotions, and that supports these meta metabolic functions like bone density and improving your dental cavities. So you can see this is a process, you know, this isn't just like take a supplement done. If you can do it without taking the supplement is better, but that means you need to have this metabolic machinery working. If you've got low vitamin D, but you also have low cholesterol, the problem there is probably not that you have low vitamin D, it's probably that you have low cholesterol. Because if you don't have enough cholesterol, your body can't afford to turn that cholesterol into vitamin D. It's using the cholesterol for other jobs like cell repair or fighting inflammation or building your other hormones like your cortisol, like your testosterone, like your estrogen. So you have to look at vitamin D holistically. And I think when you look at it through the lens of it being a hormone, that helps. Because instead of thinking like, this is just some like dumb vitamin that I just take and I just need to get my level to a certain point, you understand that this is a really intricate, nuanced, complex hormone that is gonna, it's, you're gonna, if you're doing it right, you will feel different. If you're taking the right dose at the right time and you're doing everything properly, you will feel different, you know? As I've said here, you'll wake up and you'll be like, wow, I'm full of energy. And then you'll lay in bed and you're like, like that, just completely asleep in a second. I went to bed last night and within like five minutes, I was, I was asleep. Like that's what it's supposed to be like. That's, that's how sleep is supposed to be. None of this like laying there for 30 minutes or waking up five times a night. Like that's, that, that's crap. That's not how it's supposed to be. You're supposed to lay in bed, sleep, and then you wake up, boom, energy. That's how it's supposed to be. And this is a really important part of this. So what are the key takeaways from this video? What are like the actionable, tangible steps to, to get these benefits? So. We've, I put winter on this side and summer on this side. Summer is easy, so we're gonna do this first. So you wanna spend 45 to 60 minutes a day as naked as possible in the sun. Now I understand you probably can't walk around with your, with your bum out. So wear a bikini, wear the shortest shorts that you've got, get as much skin as you possibly can have exposed to the sun, exposed as possible. And the paler the skin, the faster it will synthesize vitamin D. So the the, the, the point that I wanna make here is you wanna spend as much time as possible inside the sun without getting yourself a sunburn. If you burn yourself, you went too far. As I said, sunlight is way more than just the frequencies that, that help your body synthesize vitamin D. There's a lot of other things as well. So you have to be careful. But as you do this, as you, as you tan naturally, as you expose yourself naturally, you will build up a tolerance to the sun. And this is good, you know? If you look at our ancestors years back, they would spend the whole day outside in the sun, but they would spend the whole day outside in the sun all the way from spring, all the way to winter. So they would build up a tolerance to be able to tolerate more of this, of this sun. What's really important to understand as well is the, the UV index changes throughout the day. So UV is the, 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 the wave frequency, the, the frequency of light that the body uses to synthesize vitamin D. And this changes based on where the sun is in the sky. So the higher the sun is in the sky, the more vitamin D you're gonna synthesize. But this also means you're gonna get burnt faster as well. So you have to be careful with this. If the UV index is below two, so you can go on Google and type, what is the UV index 
and then put your postcode or wherever you are, and it will tell you what the UV index is. If it's below like two or three, it's not even strong enough for you to synthesize basically any vitamin D. You want to get it slightly higher than that, and like so, I'm in Portugal right now. In the summer, you can get up to like eight to 11, which is like very, very strong. At that point, you only need to spend like 20 or 30 minutes in, in the sun. And this is what you hear like from the NHS and stuff. They're like, all you need is 20 minutes of sun exposure a day. It's like, yes, that's true, but you need to be completely naked and you need to be in Portugal in the midday sun. So if you're not doing that, you need to have more time out there. So if you're only out there with your, say you've got shorts and a t-shirt in on, you need to be out there for like two hours because you don't have as much skin exposed. So get your shirt off, you know, get, in your, get in your bra, get in your bikini, get in your little short shorts, whatever it is. Get yourself naked, get out in the sun. That's the best way to do it. If you can't do that, for whatever reason, I know there's difficulties, there's challenges, and also there's winter. So what, what do I suggest you do in winter? So you're gonna to wanna to take between five and 10K I use of vitamin D a day. This, this, is, this is considered safe and acceptable even by sort of mainstream science. They're saying that the, the, the rough like upper limit of accepted is like 7,000 I use per day. I found that, so I'm, the reason I'm giving you between five and 10 is I don't know where your vitamin D levels are right now. If your vitamin D levels are really low, you're gonna to need to go through a period, through a phase where you're having a higher amount than you usually do to get your levels back up. And if your levels may be slightly high, you wanna bring them back down. So you wanna, I find the sweet spot is, I don't, I can't remember the unit of measurement. I think it's NMOL. You'll look, if you do vitamin D testing, you'll look, you'll see the measurement. The sweet spot is between, I mean, it, it varies based on like different factors, like if you have a genetic mutation where you, you're, you don't have so many vitamin D receptors, things like this. Generally, I find the sweet spot is between about 80 and about 130. I think it's NMOL. I'm not sure, I don't remember that off the top of my head. So it's between about 80 and 130 is usually about the sweet spot. But if you're taking this as a supplement, you wanna make sure that you're combining this with K2. Otherwise you create imbalances in your body, you create imbalances in your calcium metabolism. This can pull calcium out of the bones, this can give you kidney stones, this can give you different kind of problems. So if you're ever taking vitamin D, make sure you're taking vitamin K2 alongside it. Alongside it. What I would suggest you do is just buy a vitamin D supplement that has vitamin D and K2 in it. When you do it like this, they're gonna be, if you're doing this from like a, a good supplement company, you're doing this from a, a, tr a trustable, reputable manufacturer, they're gonna have them balanced in the right ratio so that you're getting the right amount of vitamin D to K2 as a ratio. And this is what's more important. It's not so important like the, the dosages of each, it's more important the ratio between them. That's what's really important because as I said, these things work together and they have an effective ratio where they work they work together. So the ratio is what's more important than the dose, really. So making sure that you're, you're buying one that has the right ratio is good because then if you need more, you can up the dose and if you need less, you can lower the dose. I've used doses up to like 50,000 IU per day. So that's incredibly high. I do that with just vitamin D. I don't suggest you do that. If you're gonna do that, you probably wanna do it with K2. If you're gonna do anything outside of this range, you probably wanna talk with somebody. You know, I find generally this is pretty safe, especially at least for a few months. If you're doing this just over winter, and then in the summer you're gonna go and lay on the beach and enjoy yourself, you'll be fine doing that. But if you're gonna do anything more than that, definitely go and talk with someone to make sure that you're doing the right thing for your body and test. You know, test this regularly. This is one of the things that's really important to test because your, your levels can change very fast and it's gonna affect how you feel. So just test, you know, it's like, it's usually like 30 euros. It usually doesn't cost that much. 30 euros, 25 pounds. If you've got, if you're in the NA, if you're with the NHS in the UK, you can just say, yeah, I need to test my vitamin D because I take vitamin D supplements. I don't know where my levels are. They'll just do it, okay? So just test, you know, it's, it's easy. Um, so a final note here is, you wanna make sure that you're taking the vitamin D in the AM or be at least before 1 p.m. So as I said, vitamin D is like a hormone. So this is gonna affect how you feel. This is gonna stimulate you to feel awake. So if you're taking vitamin D and you're taking it right before you go to bed, you've just told your body, let's wake up, let's have energy, it's the start of the day. And obviously you're gonna not be able to sleep very well. So you wanna make sure that you're taking this in the morning. And as I said, even if we do take vitamin D as a supplement, you're taking it here, right? So if your body needs to activate it, it's still gonna go through the liver, the kidneys to become actually activated vitamin D. So taking this first thing in the morning is gonna give this resource to your body and then it can activate it through the day as it, as it needs to do so. But doing this like late at night or even, even after 1 p.m., it can have negative effects on your sleep. So if you wanna split your dose, you can do like half right in the morning and then half at lunchtime, that's fine. I personally like, I, I, just, want, I just want a simple life. So I just, I just take it in the morning and it's fine. As long as you're not taking it right before bed, it will be, 
it will be okay. So you could do it at morning in breakfast. If you do like intermittent fasting in the morning and you only eat at lunch, like 1 p.m., you can take it there, that's okay. Because that's when you would usually be getting that sun exposure. So that's a totally fine time to take it. Just make sure you're not taking it before bed. Otherwise, it's just gonna absolutely mess up your sleep and your energy levels. Remember, it's a hormone. It's not a vitamin, it's a hormone. So when you take it, it's gonna affect how you feel when you take it, and that's gonna have knock-on effects on all of the other time around the clock as well, because it's a hormone and it affects your circadian balance. So that's everything for today. I'm now gonna go through and see if there's any questions. So if you do have any questions, you haven't asked them yet, please make sure that you leave them so that I can answer them for you. Let's take a look. I don't think we have any. Uh, Danielle Wilson says, interesting, thank you very much. I'm glad that you're finding it interesting. Love learning this, thank you. You're, you're absolutely welcome. I'm, I'm really glad that it's, that it's helpful. This is so important. You know, this, is, this is one of those things that's really basic. Like, why do you not get taught this in school? This, like, th this is the science that's really important. You, know, you need to know this, this is really important. I want to get this taught in schools. I think it's very important. Talk about a myth buster. I'm not sure what a myth buster is. So I don't think I can talk about that. Maybe I'm not, not qualified to talk about that just yet. Myth busters, uh, when you say myth busters, I think of the, the, the show that used to be on the Discovery Channel uh, when I used to live back in the UK. So yeah, I think that's everything you need to know. If I've missed anything, if you have any questions, any doubts, any hesitations, uh, leave, me a, leave me a comment, leave me a question. Uh, if you need some, some more like personal help, reach out. If it's a bit of a personal question, you know, sometimes you don't really wanna post your health stuff all over, all over, all over a, a comment thingy or a description or something, just um, reach out and send me a message and I'll, I'll be happy to help you. So, oh, Daniel says, I am a Mythbusters. Yeah, I think I am. So, <laughs> especially with the, the saturated fat, the cholesterol thing, if you're still not sure about this, if you can't just take my word for it from, from here, go on my YouTube channel and search William Dickinson Cholesterol. There's a really amazing video that walks you through it. It's gonna help you understand why you have high cholesterol levels. It's gonna talk to you about how you can lower them naturally. It's gonna help you figure out like what's going on and it's gonna take all of that fear out of it. You know, because I was told when my cholesterol levels were high that I wasn't gonna have a heart attack any like in six months. I was told I was gonna have a heart attack any second. And you don't need, like that kind of fear is not a healing energy to be in. So if I can dispel that fear around cholesterol and help you understand what it actually means and what you can do about it, then I think that's really important. So go and check that video out. If you, if you enjoyed this and you just wanna know a little bit more about cholesterol, that will be a really good video for you. Lily Addo says, thank you so much for taking the time to share. I just recently started taking vitamin D. That's, that's, that's great, Lily, that's awesome. Just make sure you've got vitamin K2 in there as well. It's really, really important. Don't make the same mistake that I did where you take vitamin D without K2. It will cause lots of different problems. So make sure you're taking K2 alongside it. Liz, nice to have you, Liz. Liz says, do you need to get your levels, uh, do you need to get your levels tested to know how much you need? I think it's a good idea, especially because it's not really that expensive. You know, it's one of those things that's it's, it's really quite, quite inexpensive to do, especially if you just do it like maybe twice a year. So get it tested in the middle of summer, get it tested in the middle of winter. Now is a really good time to test it because we're moving out of the, the sun exposure. This is one of the best times to do it. So go get yourself a vitamin D um, test booked. If you're, if you're on the lower half, you probably want to be up at the, the 10K. If you're between the, you're, if you're above, but not at the maximum, probably be about 7K. If you're above the maximum, probably go to about 5K. Because this is important that you understand. Even if you have levels that are too high, if you stop taking it, it's gonna make you feel bad because your body has become dependent on this hormone. This is like just, this is just removing something your body has become dependent on. So even if your levels are high, you don't wanna just stop. You wanna reduce your levels. So coming down to like four or 5K per day is a, is a, is a better idea in a case like that than just, just stopping it altogether. Lisa says, certainly taking, seeking health vitamin D. Great, so I guess that has K2 in, that's awesome. So that's everything for today. If you have any questions after this video, please just reach out and let me know. And I'll see you in the next video. Hope you enjoyed it. Ciao.